Hey up guys, what's going on? Welcome to episode 5 of the Bradford Save. I just want to start off with a thank you to anyone who has watched me during week 1 of this. Thank you for that. I wasn't really expecting anyone to watch this, so the fact that anyone's turn anyone at all has turned up and watched me ramble on whilst a game of simulated football is occurring. Thank you. And if you're watching this, in fact, if you're watching this in the future, if you've if you've come across an episode further down the line or a future save way further down the line, and you've come back to check out the older stuff or start from the beginning, thank you to you two. I appreciate the heck out of all of you. Now, I start with some news for Bradford, which is this guy. He's joining in the summer, but I'm going to bring you the news now because I've done it all already. His contract ends in May, which I think is why he's, why he's been, occurred now, because it's, it, he is within six months, and that's when you can start signing players. He is 16, he'll be 17 by the time he joins us, he's going to be on £800 a week, which, if I could shift a few players who are on wages in the uh, January and the summer transfer windows, £800 a week is a very low risk move for us. I, think, I don't know what happened with Bradford. I'm guessing that a lot of players left on free transfers at the end of last season, which is why an actual shed load of people have been signed on frees and loans for Bradford in the actual summer of this, which means I've got a lot of wages on the... A lot of wages in January. I might be able to shift a few of those, which would be great if I can get some upgrades on those players that are on higher wages than they really should be. That would be great if I can get rid of them. There's a couple of players who look like they're already going to leave, so that's fantastic. This guy, 17 years old by the time he will join us, 16 now, but... 10 dribbling, 10 first touch, 11 passing. They'll develop, hopefully. To 15 technique, flair, 14. And determination is 10, so that's pretty all right, really. Vision's all right. But his physicals are really what drew me in here. Uh, 15, 13, 15, 14, 13. Spe particularly in this 13 stamina, 15 natural fitness. It looks like he's, even at a young age, he's going to have the, uh, the physical demand, be able to keep up with the physical demands of multiple game a week leagues, like League One and the Championship. So it looks like he's going to be all right on that front. Uh, and for £800 a week, I feel like this is going to be a low-risk move. He is predicted to be 3.5 star to 4.5 star on the potential, so if he can live up to that, that'd be great. My only worry is if Bradford as a club develops faster than he does, if the level of player that we're going to need increases faster than his level as a player, that's the only time that this is going to backfire, maybe. He's going to join us in the summer, £800 a week, it'll do us, will be a good signing. Figured it came across my radar, I thought, why not? So, in terms of the games we're playing today, we have Scunthorpe and Sunderland. However, I just want to draw attention to a few things in terms of the games we played in between. Now, we last met, I believe, Coventry and Gillingham. It was actually a long time ago we met. Coventry and Gillingham, I believe, are the matches that we last played. Now, there's been quite a lot of um, cup games in between there, which is why this looks a lot worse than it is in terms of the number of games I've played in between. But as you can see, we did lose. The unbeaten season hope is over. We lost to Peterborough away. We lost to Luton away as well. That wasn't particularly embarrassing, really. Um, and we've also lost to Walsall. We lost to home as well, which was kind of embarrassing. But in terms of this, it actually is less bad than it looks because we drew with Portsmouth 2-2, who were second, who still are second. That was a little bit annoying because we were 2-0 up. I was really annoyed that we fact we lost. We did, I think we missed a penalty in that as well, which is even worse. Then we did lose to Peterborough and Luton and Walsall, but we do have a win against Plymouth here and a win against Oxford. So it's a draw, two wins and three losses. We are still four points in the lead, which isn't too bad, but you can see the other draw and loss here is actually in the uh, FA Cup. We are out of that. We lost to Shrewsbury, we were bottom of League 2, annoyingly. That allows us to focus on the league right now. We've only got the checker, checker trade still going on, and we face West Brom under 23s in that next in January. However, Scundop and Sunderland are on the... On the way now in a way the fact we've lost has relieved a little bit of pressure on us because now we're not it's not as important that we win everything but we we are four points ahead i would like to stay four points ahead at the very least going forward just have a little bit of a buffer on the team in second but scundob sort of local-ish to bradford so i figured to bring you that one and then sunderland are the team that are were predicted to become top of the uh, table in the season preview they are still predicted to become top of the table even though they're in 11th I'm not sure how that changes as the season progresses. I always thought that actually changed depending on where teams are in the table as well. That sort of it, it, where they are in the table as the season progresses affected the uh, season preview, but it doesn't seem to be affecting it anymore. So I'm, I think it's just on the caliber of player. I'm just used to having players that develop over the course of a season. That's probably why my teams tend to get less and less odds because it's just the snapshot of all the teams at that point. So Sunderland and Scunthorpe. Scunthorpe first. First things first, Reeves got injured again, so Akpan's back here. 
the other thing is O'Connor is just slightly tired, so McGowan is playing, even though he's one of those players who actually is going to probably disappear at the end. I, I'm, hoping he, I, I'm hoping we can get rid of him in January. He wants to leave in January, and clubs have come in with offers. They were just a little bit low for my liking. I probably will regret just denying them that they were only about about way 25% off what I would really want from the player. So hopefully that doesn't backfire when you lose him on a free one. We could have got about 200,000. 200,000 is better than nothing, right? But they came in a little bit low. The other one is that uh, Chickson, the left the left back, who's only featured once for, once for me because he's on way higher wages than his quality really is, to be honest. But otherwise, we are pretty much full strength. I've just put right over Payne just because right is slightly fresher by 3%. That's about it. Otherwise, Vokin, Saris, McGarren, Riley, Woodman and Goal, Akpan in the ball winning midfielder role at the back there, O'Brien and right in the middle, uh, Seedorf and Scannell on the wings, and Doyle up front. The other thing I do want to mention is Alex Jones is on the bench now as the backup striker. I kind of disregarded him at the beginning of this. I do remember doing it now because I made a joke about his name not being the greatest. I kind of forgot about him as a player entirely, so, and then I realised he's actually our second best striker. So, He's back on the bench. He is sort of playing a little bit. He has scored at one point, but not the best overall rating. He sort of played when Doyle's been tired more than anything. But we pretty much the first first team side that's been playing for the most of the season. So they seem to be playing exactly the same formation. So that we'll see how this matches up. I do recognise Cameron Borthwick Jackson here. Um, the Man United. Oh, he actually did go to Leeds properly. I didn't realise he wasn't still at Man United. I just presumed he. Oh, he's on loan for Man United. I thought he'd. I thought he'd actually full on left here. Oh, he's, he expires at the end of the season. Hmm, I wonder what his potential's like. 82, quality signing? I keep an eye on him if we actually get any money. Oh, mind you, if he leaves on free. This is wage demands. Nope! Pundits! Yes, they like the pundits one. And we kick off. Scunthorpe, in fact, kick off, kick off the game. You can see there we are four points ahead of Coventry in second. And then Portsmouth in third. That's not really changed too much. I'm really hoping our defenders are right here. This is just rocketing by, by the way. And a highlight here. 14 minutes into the game, we have... Oh dear. Don't, 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 don't red card him. Please don't. And that uh, uh, has been red carded. Great. Two feet, apparently. That was two feet. Uh, hmm. We'll just do the usual thing when someone gets sent off, which is this. There we go. Just bob them back a bit. And that sort of solves it a little bit, maybe. Uh, I'll go off positive as well. Let's go balanced. I won't go fully cautious, but we can't really afford to be positive right now. Back post, not sure what happened there. I think he hit a, I think he hit a post. Yeah, he hit the post. And they are playing... I mean, we have had more sh one more shot than them at this point, although he is in acres of space, and Woodman doesn't move at all. Great. You know how I said I wanted to stay four points ahead? Okay, so what happens here? McGowan basically just gives it to their player, and Saris is nowhere to be seen. Saris has come off the boil a little bit, annoyingly. I have actually considered rotating him out entirely. And he is on side just. Great. Although there is a highlight immediately. So let's see if we can get better. We have the equal amount of shots, but an equal on target. We've just had three blocked shots, so and two long shots. So if we can get those long shots into the box, that'd be great. So let's see where this highlight goes. Back to Saris. Right, O'Brien. Just passing around the middle. Might change the tactics altogether. But Scala is racing into that. Hits another defender. O'Brien. Oh my god, O'Brien. We do have really good players for just hoofing it into the goal from distance. We have scored quite a lot of long shots, which is why I'm slightly reticent to go on work into the box, because we do quite well with long shots in general, as you see here. Good lord. I have to clap that, and he, as he does a cartwheel. So we are 1-1. Another highlight here, 30 minutes. This is actually an exciting first half for once. So he's gone back to McGowan, who is unhappy with things, so hopefully he doesn't sabotage us. Scannell, O'Brien in the middle again. You see them just passing between them. Although Scannell uh, over to right. We do, I think I am still on overlap, by the way, uh, for the uh, wing backs here. So O'Reilly running down the side. Scannell back to Scannell just because he ran out of space. Right. 
just keep passing it between you guys, and if you can get slightly close to the goal, that'd be great. Like, within 25 yards, I'm expecting things to happen, essentially, at this point. But we have crossed it in. No one there. Scanlon to pick that up from the rebound, and... Oh, that was close. But we are still on top of it. They've not actually had a shot on target since... Oh, no, they have. Well, they haven't had a shot on target since they scored. They've just had another one. Another just shot in general. So, 1-1. One, one. This actually isn't the end of half highlight. There's still a minute and a half of uh, injury time. So... Lund, oh, oh, Joe, oh, ho, not sure how I was supposed to pronounce, be that, pronounce that. Morris on the left gets it to McGowan, who. You know how I said don't sabotage this? I literally just said the words, I hope he doesn't sabotage this. Conspiracy! I swear to God, he handled that actually there as well. I swear to God, he handled that. But never mind. I'd rather a free kick than an own goal. What on earth? Although Coventry look like they're losing. Or drawing. I think it's like they're Coventry are drawing because they've gone back to being three points behind. So Coventry are... Yeah, they are indeed drawing to Shrewsbury, who are bottom of the table. Well. Despite the fact we are still on top of this game, this is the most unfortunate game of football I have ever played on Football Manager. Apart from the O'Brien Masterclass. He is rightly on 8.2 just for that spectacular goal. Where is your passion, lads? That'll do. We kick off with 10 men and a traitor in defence. McGowan is apprehensive. Okay, Vokin's on a free kick here. McGowan at the back. Make up for mistake. Hmm. I don't know. He's claiming something. I think it's a corner. It's already been given. Pay attention, McGowan. I know you don't want to be here, but at least pay attention to the match. This is still going... No, it's not. No, it was just a, one of those worthless corner highlights. Well, I'm getting the traitor off. I can't trust you. Skull has been booked. I didn't even see that happen. But I... Uh, oh, you can play there. You say I don't have anyone who could play there. I'll do. Seedoff doesn't like being that far back. And it's... McGowan was also really tired as well for some reason. Just tired of feeding the enemy information. Time's ticking away here and still nothing is happening in the second half. Riley has had a poor game here, so... Mella. Okay, so this game is ticking away. There's no point in anything. 30 seconds from time. Right. O'Brien. Seedorf. And they have a break. I think we're going to lose this, even though we've had 20 shots with 10 men. Oh no, Mella has gotten on that, so we don't quite... I think it's just going to be the end of the, end of the game, really. If we can get this forward quickly, that would be really great. Well, an exciting first half was counterbalanced by a terrible second half. <sighs> okay, well, the good news is we haven't lost ground, too much ground. I am going to be, you know what, full-on aggressive. Also, you've now seen us lose. I... The only thing to take from this is, oh no, Coventry did end up winning. 90 plus 5. Great. Paul Smith ended up scoring as well, which is even worse, because they had slipped up as well. Both of them scored very late in the game. Great, we're one point clear. And welcome back for the Sutherland match. Now, there's been a few enforced changes here. Because of Akpan's dismissal and McGowan being on international duty on Boxing Day, incidentally, I just realised what time of the year it was in-game. Akpan's just got sent off so he can spend long, more, more time with his family, hasn't he? That's what's happened. Cunning, but mm, annoying. So because both of our first-choice DMs have disappeared, O'Connor has to go there, Ishwood has to come into defence. So he only really plays when... I'm recording for some reason. And because of how poor O'Reilly was, I need to call him O'Reilly there, because of how poor Riley was in the last game, I'm going to actually start Mella. He's been asking for more first team football, so I'm going to give him it. All right then. So other than that, Hudson comes back onto the bench because I kind of forgot about him, as does Colville. They're better choices for us really in general, but everyone's doing quite well in terms of fitness this time around, other than the fact that Ish was a little bit out of sorts in terms of playing time. But other than that, we seem to be all right. 
I did forget, as I mentioned, that we have rotated the midfield a little bit. O'Brien, uh, this is the sort of strongest middle two we have, is Wright and Payne. O'Brien's on the bench. I think he's actually the best one to play in DM as well, out of the three. So having him on the bench as backup is probably better for us right now. Uh, anyway, it's time to put an end to this poor run of form. They don't seem to care. Passion and having faith didn't make much difference either. Uh, so we kick off. We're in the blue, suddenly in the red. And here we go. Honeyman is really tired. But he's on the ball. What more? So, oh, Catamol's just going to smash it over. Whew. Right. Come on then, team. We're away from home, but we could really do with a win here. Still one point clear as things stand with this draw. Looks like Coventry are losing, but Portsmouth have picked up points so far. But we are only 15 minutes into the games. Uh, what is curious here is Coventry being high up. They're, they, they were predicted to be even lower than we were. Doyle, though, is somewhat clear here. And scores! Come on! Doyle hasn't really scored a lot whilst... Uh, during the recordings. He does all right in the in-betweens, but whenever I'm recording, he just seems to vanish. However, he's finally scored for us. I think he may have scored at some point, probably in one of the bigger wins we had when we recorded, but he sort of disappears for large periods of time. This is his 14th goal of the season. He is our top scorer, but he does seem to disappear for a few games at a time. But hopefully this means he's back and he's going to start scoring again for us. I was contemplating starting Jones, so I'm glad I didn't there. Right. Hits a goal. Free kick into the goalie. Is that the highlight? No, it continues. Okay. I'm slightly I mean, it was a decent free kick, but he gathered that pretty easily. Isherwood hoofs that down the side. Oviedo thinks about it and then doesn't and then thinks about it a bit more. Oh, that's a mistake from the goalie. Doyle, come on. Ah, uh, Corner, though. Is the corner the part of the highlight that's important here? Or is the lack of our capitalisation from their mistake the, the real highlight? It was. Okay. Payne with a uh, free kick on the side. Scowl just to the back post there. 2-0 to Bradford. We have turned up this game. Finally. I was slightly worried by the run of form we were on there. But Scowl on the back post. Saris has been booked, which is slightly worrying. Um, but he doesn't get booked that often, Saris, to be honest. Now I've said that, he's probably going to get sent off. They've been fired up by the feedback, but I might start closing down that guy who is super tired in their defence. Just to see if he makes a mistake. Catamon get Catamon just whizzes another one just over the bar. But they've had one shot on target. We've had seven. Our team is calm and composed. I like that. But it is half time. We're going up 2 0 at half time, which is great. They appear to have taken on board the uh, despite their lack of real feedback in the initial talk, they seem to have reacted well on the pitch at the very least. I'm going to say, don't let your performance levels drop. I like this. Yes, it worked. Sometimes that backfires, but it worked that time. It always seems a risky one to go for. They don't let your performance drop. Sometimes it ends up being confused for some reason. It's a fairly easy instruction, to be honest. And where is the... Oh, it's there. Oh, the fuck. He sort of blended into the board at the back there. I was like, where's the ball? What more on the right? Oviedo, clear on the left here. We've not really paid attention. Honeyman... Oh, Woodman with a fantastic save. Second shot on target for them. Cadamol has been booked. In other news, water is wet. They are actually being slightly dangerous right now. They're getting into this game somewhat. Oh, that's a penalty. Rice, Rice in trouble. I think he only got yellow. Yeah, he only got yellow. That's fine. Come on, Woodman. Half their teams are... Oh, he, he went the right way as well. Oh, he went the right way, but, you know, we've given away a penalty. He runs back as if it's 90, 90th minute. He actually got a touch to it as well, Woodman. Oh, that's unfortunate. However, uh, starting a bit tired here. Although, I will just see this highlight out before we do make any changes. Their goalie manages to kick it to our player from their goal kick. Seedorf kind of forgets he's playing football briefly there. But it gets out to Vokins anyway, and back to Seedorf, who gets tackled again. Oh, is this, is this going to be their highlight? Ricochets off our player, ends up with Kadamar in the middle. I think this might end up being... Mella mm, thought about that and then forgot to keep running. One more is clear, this is going to be an equaliser. Oh my god! 
Woodman is the only reason why we're still in this game. O'Connor manages to clear that from that catamol. Goes close again. I thought that was in for a second there. All right, time to make some changes, I think. No one's having a particularly bad game except for Ishwood this time. He actually had a decent game last time we played, but I don't have anyone to take over that position. However... Right, so what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to push O'Connor back in defence a little bit more just because I'm slightly worried about Ishwood right now on, on the way he is. I've just had to push these. I'm going for a five at the back with wingbacks instead right now. That means Robertson has to come on because Vokas doesn't like being any further forward than just natural defender left. So that's the only change I'm going to make right now. Hopefully that helps us see out the game. Tactically, I just have to shift things up a little bit because I am slightly worried about the defence and the fact they are getting into the game a little bit. Staying on balance, though. Saris is winning everything in the air today. Yes, my faith in him is rewarded, even though the fact that I had literally no other choice because I have no other defenders right now. Catamol finally gets the equaliser. Why can't you get sent off? You usually do. Who did he beat? Where is he and who did he actually beat for the ball there? It's this player in the middle. Who are you? I can't see you. Oh, it is Ishwood. He just doesn't do anything. You know how I said I was worried about Ishwood? There it is. All right, so I'm just changing things up a little bit again here. Just bringing pain up front, pushing these guys back again, taking Ishwood off. We need to get... We need to get this goal early. We need to stay on top of this a little bit more. I might just change Josh Wright as well because he's been booked and I don't want anyone to get sent off. So if we can now... I don't want to push. I want to stay balanced. But if we can get something here, that would be great. Time is ticking away. There is enough time on this for me to think there might be an actual highlight here at the death, but we'll see. Thankfully, Payne can do that advanced playmaker role in the AMC position there. Colville on the ball. Payne... A bit further back than I'd probably like at this point. Robertson on the left gets it to Seedorf. Can he overlap and get something out of this? Yes? No. Nope. Goes through and Brian back in the middle. But does go back out to Robinson. Is anything actually going to happen here or are we just going to pass this around the goddamn central third, really? Forever. Seedorf. We're in attacking position here, but is he still going to call time? He has. Two all. Kind of stop the rush a little bit. But two all away at Sunderland. Isn't a bad performance, to be honest. A little disappointing we've thrown that away from 2-0 up at half-time. I said don't get complacent. And we kind of got complacent. That didn't go well. I am disappointed, to be honest. They've thrown it away. However, we are still one point clear of Portsmouth, who won away at Gillingham. Coventry looked like they slipped up, maybe. Coventry drew with Charlton. Portsmouth beat Gillingham. So we are one point clear still. But it's getting tighter at the top, and I don't like it. So, when we come back for the next episode, I think I'm going to bring you this Wickham game regardless. They're currently sixth. This away game at Wickham is probably going to be an important game for us. Maybe I'll bring you Burton. Maybe I'll bring you Fleetwood. It probably depends on how much transfer act activity we have, how much I need to bring you up, up to speed on. So, expect probably two of these three here. Wickham and then either side. One of these two either side. Haven't quite decided yet. So, thank you for joining me. Hopefully we can stay in the, at the very least promotion spots. Champions is something I might be okay to relinqu relinquish, but automatic promotion is something we're definitely still going to pursue here. Because we've got this far. We're still in the lead. One point gap is getting tight. Until next time. Ta-ra.